All right, welcome back. Today I want to talk about zeroing and setting up a, a red dot pistol. So I see this discussed a lot. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. So first we'll start with uh, definitions, right? So a zero is where your point of aim equals your point of impact. So if you are shooting your gun and you're like, hey, I have it set up so that my red dot is at six o'clock, my rounds are impacting at the X ring, you do not have it zeroed at whatever distance you think it is zeroed at. Okay, another issue I see in regards to understanding of the zero is that people will take data from the internet and apply it where maybe it's not applicable. So these two guns have different barrel lengths, right, and very different optic heights. So if I'm zeroing based off of data with this gun, but I'm using a gun that has a very, very different setup, those numbers are not going to match up. And the reason that is, is because quite simply, when we zero a weapon, we are creating a angular relationship between the barrel, right, and the optic. So if our bullet goes straight out of the barrel, right, our optic has to somehow, right, cross that line by being zeroed, right? And this is the distance that we're going at. Everything before that, right, there's gonna be some deviation, okay? Now, high over bore isn't really too great with a pistol, so it's not that big of a deal, but we still need to understand a little bit of external ballistics or to properly uh, zero our gun. So that being said, our second step here is gonna be about kinda like setting it up from ground zero. We have our new optic, right? We got our Trigicon RMR. Maybe you got a Hollow Sun, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. This applies to, to everything. So, step one is going to be uh, cat crap. Okay, so cat crap is this anti fog, and you want to get the paste, not the spray. All we're going to do is take this with a little bit of a fabric, like that soft microfiber cloth, rub it on both sides of the lens, let it sit for five to ten minutes. And then we'll take it, wipe it off, we'll have a good uh, anti-fog coating on our optic. The next thing we're going to do is mark our battery. And we'll mark our battery with a Sharpie. And we'll put kind of date, month uh, on the back of it, right? So on this side where it says Energizer or Duracell or whatever, that's where you're going to mark it with your Sharpie, not the side that makes contact with the battery. You can change your battery once a year. You can change it. Um, on your birthday, kind of anything you want to do, but it's good to have it marked anyway, right? It's like a redundancy that doesn't hurt. The next thing we're going to do is going to apply Vibrotite to our screws, and then we will mark them with paint pen. Witness mark. Okay, so what is Vibrotite? Vibrotite is a thread locker that's designed uh, to kind of combat the shock vibe uh, that occurs on a weapon. So it's the vibration that occurs when your slide cycles that makes it uh, loose, right? By it, I mean your screws. So put just a little bit in there, screw them in, and I'll take our paint pen and we will witness mark, just little tick marks, those screws. So we can immediately uh, look at our gun and tell that the screws haven't come loose uh, and it's good to go. Since converting to Vibrotite, I've had way less issues uh, with screws coming loose. So in my experience, that's a really, really good product. Okay, now your gun's all set. You got your battery, you got everything just like this. I mean, to get to the range, we need a zero. So that's our, our last step, step three. Okay, so I like to start at 10 yards just to get on paper. I don't like a 10 yard zero. Uh, because it ends up being high at 25. And if I do a 25 yard zero, it's only a little bit low at 10. So understanding that relationship, I want to get my rounds generally in the six o'clock of the 10 ring, kind of that 10 line split uh, when I'm doing my zero. So let's say we start here uh, and my rounds are, are all like that, right? We'll do a five round group. Right, because we want more data. Okay, five rounds, I think it's kind of like the minimum, like some solid numbers when zeroing. You can do three, I think three is fine if you can properly call your shots. 
So say our, our rounds are right there, uh, right outside the, the nine ring. So our elevation is generally okay, but windage, right? If this is a five and a half inch circle, that means that we probably have about three inches. So how much is three inches at 10 yards? How many clicks do I make? Well, we understand from looking at our optic, right? That one click is one minute of angle. So one minute of angle is 1.047 inches at 100. We'll call it one, right? It's cool knowing the actual number for more precision long range stuff, but for this kind of thing, uh, one is fine. So that means I'm doing 30 clicks left, right? I'm moving the group where I want it to go. And because it's centered up and I want it to go down, so that's like, call it one inch, right? I'll also do um, 10 clicks down, right? And that would put my group generally where I want it. Okay, so once that happens, right, we can shoot three or five rounds there. Uh, we'll move to 25. I'll do the same process. Now we're at 25, not 10. So each click is not a tenth of an inch, but a quarter of an inch. So it's four clicks per inch. We need to understand that uh, so that we're not chasing crazy things. Now, once we finish that process, uh, we've gotten all of our rounds in, in the black. Hey, maybe shoot 100. Uh, I would like to do uh, a 10 round slow fire group, right? Like the best 10 shots of my life uh, to confirm that zero. And then I will finally bust out my paint pen. I will witness mark my windage and elevation adjustments on the optic. So I've actually never had a RMR loosen up. Right, I've had them break for their uh, elevation adjustments, but I've never had them get loose. But it doesn't hurt. I think it also helps going from kind of like your duty to your, to your practice ammo. So I like to zero with my duty ammo, right? But who wants to shoot HST or gold out all the time, right? We'll call it duty or your carry ammo, right? Depending on your personal circumstances. So what I will do is I will note the difference in point of impact between duty and practice. So let's say HST, 147, right, zero. And I'm shooting now Lawman, 147, and that is, call it 1.5 inches high and one inch left, right? So it's printing generally kind of up in there, right, up at uh, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the black. So that means that I can come into the range every day with a gun that's already zeroed for what I am carrying, right? And without shooting any rounds, I will do, all right, so it's, what's four times one and a half, that's six. I'll do six clicks down, right? And I will do four clicks right. So every day, come in, six clicks down, four clicks right, load the gun with 147 grain lawman, get to work, do all my practice, right? And then I just take those clicks out and I can either you know count six up and four left. And then I can also just look at it and I can tell that the tick marks are aligned. I know my gun is now zeroed back to the previous ammunition. It's a really easy trick. I mean, you can also shoot uh, a confirmation group every single time. I like to start with uh, zero confirmation, right, 25 yards slow fire. But what if we're doing like the no fail shot? Right, that, that's a cold drill. I can't do a zero confirmation, but I can put the clicks in immediately uh, to start training with the ammo that I'm shooting. I hope this helps. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I hope we do more of these kind of instructional videos in the future. Thanks.